Hi everyone, it's Nick here from Notero. Today I'm going to show you how to use the calendar. The very first thing I'm going to show you is this sidebar. And if you needed to hide this small little calendar, you can just click on this triangle here. And it's going to hide the calendar. If you need to show it, you just click on it again. The next is location. So if you have multiple locations, you'll see this section on your sidebar. And I can toggle between locations if I need to. Next is practitioner. I have it listed as active view, meaning that they have to have an availability which is represented by this blue background here, a break or an appointment on the calendar. If I want to switch explicitly to calendars, I can turn calendars on just by clicking on them and it shows one is selected. I can select another calendar if I want to explicitly turn two calendars on or I can go back to active view or I can go to everyone. In this case, everyone in active is the same because the way uh, the events are on the calendar. The next uh, section down here is my wait list. And so if I needed to show any matches of anyone on a wait list, I'll just turn this toggle on and I can see I have matches on my wait list. If I needed to notify these people on my wait list, I can do it either individually by clicking on uh, individual person, in this case, Sammy. And then I can just click email and it'll notify Sammy that there's a, uh, an opening. Or I can hit notify and it's gonna notify uh, both clients or patients at this time. If I needed to add someone to my wait list, all I need to do is click this add, and then I just go through the parameters. So I put their, you know, get their first name. And so in this case, it could be Jimmy G. And what practitioner wait list that they want to be on, maybe they just want to be on Paul's. And they can only come to the Burlington location. If they had a start and end time, so maybe this summer they had some Availability, you can put a, a start end time uh, when they're available and toggle that back off. And then you have a choice of the practitioner's uh, shortest appointment or you can pick the duration time that they're looking for. And then you just have to simply ask them what days are they available. They might be all day on Wednesday or just maybe the afternoon and evening. And then you'd save and they're added to the wait list. And then whenever they match, they'll show up in this match column. If you want to view everyone who's on the wait list, you just have to click view all and they'll show everyone on the wait list. Okay, so we'll just turn that switch off. If I need to manage my schedule, so I have to add my schedule, so I'll toggle this on and you can see now the calendar has changed. So those light blue, they have turned to a, a gray color here. I can still see my break, so I can hover over there. I can still see my break and I can still see these appointments, but they're represented as thin bars on the calendar. So if I needed to add my schedule for online booking, I could just simply click and drag. And I can make adjustments. So if I didn't drag it far enough, far enough, I can change that to eight. And if I want to repeat that schedule up, maybe I only want to repeat it up for the next nine weeks. And I can quickly simply add that. And now my schedule has been added for that Hamilton location. Um, if I want to make adjustments as well, I can make adjustments by just clicking and dragging the bottom. And if I want to change just for this availability or all, I can toggle that on and confirm the change. And it'll update all those availabilities. Availabilities are for online booking, so your schedule needs to be put in for online booking and the wait list. And this other little function that we have at the top here, which is promotions. So if I click on this promotions, what it is doing is, is building uh, posts for social media. And so we have a number of um, posts that you can use. You just click on the circle with the arrow. You can generate a new post or a new message and you can toggle through a number of them. You can change it if you need it to. The title, you can edit the title, the description. You can change the image color if you want it to. And then once the post has been built, you can post it to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or WhatsApp and they'll promote those available spaces on your calendar. So again, you need to put your schedule in for the wait list, for online booking, and to use this little promote feature that we have here, okay? There's another little feature at the top here. So if someone's standing in front of you and asking you what you have in six weeks from now, you can just hover over this uh, forward direction arrow and you can just move the calendar or jump it ahead, you know, four weeks or whatever, whatever they're looking for. That's a quick little function instead of trying to count on this calendar. You can move these events as well. You can see that uh, you can't notice this uh, person's name because I have a privacy mode. So if I just click 
or sorry, hold down the shift key and click P. You can see who that appointment is for. So if you're showing someone your calendar, you can um, hide their name, okay? Or you can expose their name if you needed to enable double booking. Again, the shift and the D key. And then you can see I have some room to put additional appointments beside that. So I can, um, it's not just two appointments, you put three, four, or five, or however many appointments you need uh, side by side. I turn that back off. I can also access, access the privacy and that double booking by this drop down menu here. So if I'm on a touch device, I can, uh, I can still access it by that drop down menu at the very top there. Okay, so oh, I didn't mean to do that. We'll take a look at that slide out in a minute. So as I was saying, I can move these events around. And so uh, if I wanted to move this to Topper's um, calendar, because he has capacity, I can, and I can confirm the change. And it'll only allow you to move it across uh, practitioners that they both perform that service. So if Topper didn't perform the service, it would not allow that appointment to be moved. Okay, so that's how you can sort of move events very quickly. So what we're looking at is a day view. I can also look at the calendar in a week view. And today's the ninth. So if I scroll, you can see my events in this view. And because I have four practitioners, I only have so many columns that will show up. So I'll need to horizontally scroll if I need to see the rest of the weeks. Okay, so when uh, an individual shows up for, in this case, this is, this is um, an appointment. I can just click on them. I can mark them as arrived. I can add a clinical note from this view. And the, the benefit is it, it, it grabs all this information and starts to populate your note. I can create an invoice, okay? And these are links. So if I needed to get to the note, I can just go right to the note from here. And the invoice will step through that in a minute. And if I want to add a form, I can also add a form from this page. So if I need to process a payment, I just have to click on invoice number two. And if the person is paying the invoice off in full, I can step through this very quickly by maybe just clicking cash and it'll mark this invoice as if paid and I can send them a receipt. Well, once it's been marked as paid, I can just click on this drop down, and I can print email or download um, um, a, re a receipt or an invoice for them. If I want to step through the payment process instead of a quick pay, I can click on pay and maybe um, they're only going to be paying partially. So this is an outstanding amount for $66. And maybe they're only going to pay me $60. Um, there's no tip. And then, then I just add a payment method. If your account was registered with Bambor or Square, you can pay directly with Bambor and Square through the application. If they had account credit, you can use some of their account credit. In this case, we're just going to pay cash. But they only had $20 of cash. And so we're going to add another payment method. Um, and I'm going to use a gift certificate. And you can see at the bottom of the screen that we do the math for you as well. So you know you have to collect $40. So uh, maybe they had a $40 gift certificate. And I can click pay, or I can click this little triangle, and this is pay an email. And so pay an email, so their receipt, you collect a payment, and you sent them an invoice. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. If I needed to add an appointment to the calendar, I just click on the calendar, and I have three types of events. I is going to add an appointment, so we'll step through that in a minute. I can add a class, and I'll talk about classes in a minute, or a break. So if you needed to cover your calendar so people can't book into it, you can put a break, as I did here, so people can't book into that slot, or you just need to mark your calendar so there's a reminder that you don't book yourself in there as well, so you can add a break. So an appointment is very easy, so you can do an existing, so I can just type in the name, so I have Sammy McSample here. Um, for the service, he just uh, wants a massage treatment, a regular treatment. Uh, he doesn't want to repeat it, and we're only going to send him an email reminder uh, because he doesn't have a mobile phone number, so I can't send him a text message or a call reminder. Both these features are add-on features. The email reminder comes with your subscription, so these two are add-on features. And if I hit book and email, it'll email him the details of the appointment, so I want to send him the details of the appointment. So he's now been booked in. If I had to add someone new to the count, uh, to my calendar, I just simply click Add New, and I would go through the form, add them. They would be populated in here, and then I'd step through uh, what I just normally did. If I had to add a class, so in this case, I want to add a class. You can see I already have a yoga class. So if I want people to book into a yoga class, so let's just I'll click on this, for example, and I'll add a class. 
in this case it is a yoga class, but I want it to be at my Burlington location. I have a capacity of 10, so I've set it when I've set up my classes to 10, so I can override that. And I'm going to do it uh, for the next uh, uh, one occurrence plus the one I already have on my calendar. So it'll, it'll put two in there, and I'm going to add that class to my calendar. Okay, so that class, that yoga class has been added to my calendar, and so if I want to book anyone into it or they want to book online if it is enabled, I can click on there and I would step through very similar to what I did with an appointment. So I'll put Sammy in the class and I'll book an email. And so one person has been accounted for and um, so I know I can see now I have one person in my class. So that's how you would add an appointment or um, a break or an availability to your calendar. And so that's how you'd manage a calendar. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so thank you for watching and please click subscribe if you'd like to be notified as new videos are released.